Hey guys, welcome to the stream. Pro FSX videos. Live from the studio. Today we're going to fly from Detroit to Albany, New York in the Phoenix A320. Of course, we're going to be on VATSIM for everybody. Very exciting flight here today, or tonight rather. So let's go ahead and get started. course I haven't pre-filed yet so that is currently what I'm doing today's call sign is Delta 2205 and we are in Okay, avionics are started. Okay, we're going to just decrease the brightness here. You know, I don't I don't think I ever chose the right livery. Damn. <sighs> well, I'm going to have to go... Uh, that's gonna be uh, triggering me a little bit, so let's just go ahead and fix that. Unfortunately. Yeah, that's gonna be a... Uh, There we go. That's going to be triggering me a little bit if we don't have it right. Because otherwise we're going to be flying a Delta flight. With an Alaska paint. Well, that's just not going to happen, is it? Alright. Let's try that again. Luckily, we didn't get too far on the first round. <laughs> That means we're just going to refile. Okay. And of course that is fucked up too. Hmm. 
You gotta re-import it because... Really? I just set it to kilograms. It changed to pounds. <clears throat> Let's try it again. There we go. Okay, so for init, let's go ahead and request. And then we will go from there. And once again, my stream is not showing on Microsoft Flight Simulator. <laughs> ah, man, this issue keeps happening. Let me stream an X-Plane category. Delta 2205, cost index 24, and cruise 370. Okay, zero fuel weight, 58, 9, and 31. And then block fuel, 60, or sorry, 6.7. In terms of our departure today, well, it really depends. So, let's see what controllers we have. Might not be any, to be honest. Let's have a look. Nope. In fact, it is not. Oh, well. Alright. We're all alone. We'll do the Howie 3 departure. We'll do the Howie 3 from 2 on right. So, 2 on right. We'll do the Howie 3. And we're going to transition on the Lincoln. And blah, 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 blah. The rest is correct. Okay, so if we go into departure performance, we're going to do 2 1 right today. And sync the load sheet. The packs are going to be on. Nothing under 2, 9 or 9 or 3. And we've got 138, 140, 141. Flaps today, flaps one with a trim of down 0.1 and 68 for the flex. Alright, so let me just check real quick. Let's go into the X plane category, and there we are. Okay, so we're in the X plane category. Now let's try to change to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Hmm, that's strange. Well, let's have a look. For some reason, we're still in the explain category. Super weird. Now it says MSFS. Well, let's let it brew there for a second and we'll see. Okay, so that's all done. 
Three minutes till line, so let's go ahead and turn the fuel tanks, fuel pumps on. Looks like almost nobody is here tonight. There, now we're in the MSFS category, beauty. Okay, let me turn the brightness down to this one. There we go. And let's start the APU. I haven't listened to Jetstream Radio in a really long time. Do they still exist? Let's see. Let's see if they do. I have a feeling like they don't. Looks like they don't. Oh well, that's fine. Okay, APU bleed's coming on, external power's off. And let's see here. Let's go ahead and connect the tug. Let's take a look at uh, the... Oh, I had no idea you can do that. That's genius. Okay. Uh, Navigraph. Let's take a look at our departure. Or, we can import it from Simbrief, actually. And then our departure... Was the Howie 3. And that's the Howie 3. Top altitude 17,000. So that's 17,000. Let's start this chart, ground charts. And we'll go ahead and start this chart as well. So we're here at the terminal, south terminal, 2-1 right is going to be right there. So it looks like we'll take Kilo, Uniform, Golf, Hotel, Mike. Kilo, Uniform, Golf, Hotel, Mike. Okay. Actually, no, we're on this side. We're on this side. So we're actually going to... Taxi line Quebec, uniform golf hotel mic. Okay, beacon light on. Maybe a little bit of flood light is good. T A R A R. Excellent. Okay, so clear to push, and we're going to do tail north. Okay, brakes released. Clear to push. Starting push.
And of course we'll do the Delta safety briefing. Ignition mode selector, ignition start. Star number one. And Welcome aboard and thank you for choosing Delta. The health and safety of our customers and crew is our number one priority and the shared responsibility of everyone on board. So before we depart, please pay attention to this important message. Stow all carry-on items securely in an overhead bin and place smaller items completely under the seat in front of you. Keep the aisles, exits, and bulkhead areas clear. If you lose an electronic device in your seat, do not adjust your seat and ask a crew member for help. As we leave the gate, fasten your seatbelt by inserting the metal tip into the buckle and adjusting the strap so it's low and tight across your lap. To release, lift the top of the buckle. Stay seated with your seatbelt fastened when the seatbelt sign is on, and keep it fastened whenever you're seated in case of sudden rough air. In the event of rough air, the crew might also need to buckle up for safety. We appreciate your understanding if our service is interrupted. Federal regulations require all passengers to comply with all crew members' instructions, along with the posted placards and lighted information signs throughout the cabin. Smoking, vaping, the use of e-cigarettes, or any smokeless product, including chewing tobacco, is not allowed on any Delta flight. Federal law prohibits tampering with, disabling, or destroying restroom smoke detectors. There are eight exits on this plane, eight doors, four on each side. Start number each two. Each door has a detachable slide that can be used as a raft. In the event of an evacuation, leave all carry-on items behind. All exits are clearly marked with a green exit symbol. Locate the nearest exits and remember, they might be behind you. If we lose power, lights will illuminate the aisle to guide you to an exit. It's unlikely, but if cabin pressure changes, oxygen masks will drop from the panels above your seat and inside the lavatories. Reach up and pull the mask or streamer down to start the flow of oxygen. Remove any face covering and place the mask over your nose and mouth. Slip the elastic strap over your head and adjust the mask if necessary. Breathe normally and note that oxygen is flowing, so don't worry if the bag doesn't inflate. Be sure to adjust your own mask before helping others. A water evacuation is also unlikely, but just in case, life vests are in a compartment beneath or adjacent to your seat. To use, remove the vest from its container by pulling on the tab and then opening the pouch. Flip the vest over your head, wrap the strap around your waist, attach it to the buckle in front, and adjust securely around your waist. As you leave the plane, inflate the vest by pulling down Two good on engine the starts, at the AP bleed off, AP master off. Ignition switch level. back to normal. A water activated light is attached to each vest. Flaps one. For children Spoilers under armed. 35 pounds, place the vest around their waist and secure the strap between Flight the legs. control check. See your safety card for more information. Additional life vests for in children are in marked compartments at the full front right, and rear Full right, neutral. Elevator full up. We'll distribute these vests if necessary. Full down, neutral. Before takeoff, bring your seat to its Rudder, upright full right. position and stow your tray table. Neutral, full Be sure left. Is fastened. Neutral. Care and items are secured and aisle armrests are at resting position. If you're seated in Delta One, please close your ottoman door. If your seat has a footrest, stow it now. Flight controls for correct. Finally, take a moment to review the safety information card in your seat pocket. While we finish our safety check, please let us know if you have any questions. As we get ready for takeoff, please settle in. And from all of our crew, thank you for flying with Delta. Detroit traffic, Delta 2205, taxiing runway 21 right from South Gates. Here we go. Check the cabin.
Bridge checked. Okay, next will be a ride on uniform. TO config test. TO config normal. And left side is clear. And after that we'll make a left onto golf. Which is not this one, this is Foxtrot, the next one's gonna be Golf, where we cross runway 27 right. Detroit traffic, Delta 2205 is an A320, crossing 27 right at Golf, Detroit. Probes on. Shot. Detroit traffic Delta 2205 clear of runway 27 right, continuing to 21 right, Detroit. Strobes off. Sometimes when I uh, take the mouse off of micro the Microsoft Flight Simulator window, uh, it disables any control inputs to the aircraft. And when I go back to it, it doesn't, yeah, it kind of freezes, so that's exactly what happened over there. This is our exit here, 2 1 right. Okay, approach path clear before takeoff. Auto brake max, signs on, cabins ready, spoilers are on, flaps one, takeoff conflict, normal. Detroit traffic, Delta 2205, departing from runway 21 right on the Howie 3 departure, Detroit.
we go, take off. Fifty percent stabilized. Manflex six eight SRS auto thrust is blue. Timer started. One hundred. Rotate. Pause rate, right, gear up. Holy shit. Climb, thrust climb. Wow. I I had full deflection at one point, and not much has happened there with that full def and now the aircraft's pitching down again. Okay, autopilot on. Open climb. I wonder if FS Realistic has anything to do with that. No, it doesn't. Wow! Flaps up. Spoilers disarmed. That was something else, man.
guy here is 10 grand, so let's go ahead and turn the lights off. And let's see here. Take the trays out for once. Okay, here's 17,000. We're going to continue up to our final cruise altitude of oh, flight level 370. Do thrust, climb, open climb. Here's one eight thousand ultimate or standard set.
Alright, I'm having a little bit of dinner here. As we are flying, because it's that time of day. In terms of our arrival into Albany, we have runway 28. No arrival star. So let's take a look at our available approaches that we can potentially do into Albany. So for Albany, we can either do the ILS 19 or the Arnav Yankee or Zulu runway 19. For this per for these purposes in this flight, let's just do the ILS 19. I haven't done an ILS in a long time, I've actually just been doing RNAV approaches both in real life and the simulator. So, for something else and something different, let's just do ILS 19 into Albany. So, let's go ahead and look at our approach charts here and try to find ILS runway 19 into Albany, which is right here. There we go. So the frequency, first of all, the ATIS is 12045. We don't have approach or tower or ground online, so we can ignore these three. We're going to be on CTAF. Albany ILS frequency is 109.5 with a final approach course of 191. Uh, we're going to expect uh, a glide slope intercept point at Hockey, which is 1,600, with minimums being a 480 feet decision altitude for this ILS. Airport elevation is 285. Touchdown zone elevation is 280. <clears throat> In terms of our missed approach, you know, we're climbed to 2,000, then a climbing left turn to 5,000. Direct cam, VOR, and hold, or as directed by ATC. Of course, we're in inches. Flight level 180 is the transition out, uh, level. Uh, let's see here. So check the notes. DME or radar required, which we have. Circling runway 10, not available or not authorized at night. Use. ALB DME went on the localizer course. Okay, great. This is the mis... Uh, actually, this is the alternative missed approach hold. But this is the missed approach fix. So, as the missed approach procedure stated, if we have a missed approach... Um, which will be... You know, if we don't see the runway by 480 feet, which is depicted here, 0.9 miles, we will make a climb... Actually, first step is to climb to 2,000, then a climbing left turn to 5,000. We're going to proceed direct to Cam VOR, which is Cambridge, which is depicted here on the chart, and we're going to hold. So, looks like this is um, holding on the 160 radial, or 340 radial. Uh, right turns, and yeah, looks like a standard... Standard hold there. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so hockey is a uh, glide slope intercept point 1600, which is 3.8 DME from the VR. <coughs> Our approach lighting system is a mouser with poppies. And here we see an abbreviated. Um, Abbreviated hold instructions, so straight ahead, climb to 2,000, then a left turn to 5,000, direct cam, which is on 115.0. Okay, so, yep, uh, ILS decision altitude is 480. If we were doing a, a localizer approach, it'd be 620. Or, I mean, I mean, I guess it depends on whether we have west or not. Um, minimum visibility RVR for a full approach would be 18,800 or half mile. Okay, and circle to land, we are not doing that. So that is that. Okay, that's all I know. <laughs> approach briefing is complete. All right, and right as we did that, we're currently at flight level 370, cruising at Mach 0.779, got 29, Mach, I'll cruise, got 29 knots of wind from the, uh, 
<clears throat> looks like the uh, from the west almost. So that's a tailwind for us as we're heading eastbound. Excelente, Signore. All right, man, seatbelts coming off. Could have put them out earlier, but hey, fuck them. All right, enjoy the rest of the flight. In terms of our top of descent, that's going to be at 0409 UTC. It is currently 0348 UTC, so in exactly 20 minutes, we're going to start a descent into Albany. 160 miles, and uh, expected to arrive at Albany at 0429 Zulu, which is actually going to be in 40 minutes. Uh, 267 miles left, and estimated fuel on board is 3.6 upon touchdown. We're at 4.6, so one more ton to burn, which makes sense because if we're burning, uh, if we are burning, a 35 kilograms per minute, that means we have 180 kilograms an hour uh no if we have 35 kilograms per minute that means we are burning 2100 kilograms Per hour. But we have 40 minutes left, which is what? Which is 60 divided by 40, or 40 divided by 60. So that's 0.66. So if we multiply 2100 by 0.66, the most fuel that we're going to burn is 1386 at this power setting. However, as we descend, our power setting is going to be almost idle descent. And that's going to decrease our fuel flow to maybe half of that. So let's say, um, let's say maybe 20. So, yeah. That seems about right. Something like that. Okay, so that is that. That's a simple way to calculate fuel burn and fuel efficiency and stuff like that. Our tire pressure is looking great. Tire temperature is looking great. I have tire temperature. Brake temperature is looking great. Oh, uh, our, yeah. Okay, let's see here. What else? Oh, actually, I kind of skipped the fuel control. Yeah, flight control. Let's see. Doors closed. Green. Cockpit oxygen is looking good. Air conditioning. How hot is it in here? 23. Uh, it's a little bit warm, so let's go ahead and turn it down just a little bit more. And those bleeds should begin to cool, as they are. So the bleeds are set to 20, but the cabin temperature is set to 23. And 24 in the back. Uh, let's see. APU is off, so that's off. Fuel. We just looked at that. We have... Um, 1120 <coughs> in the left tank, 1110 in the right tank. Actually, this is fuel used. <coughs> so we have a total of 4,500 kilograms. Our left inboard tank is 1540. Our left outboard tank is, um, 700. Our fuel temperature is minus three and minus six, minus five, minus six and minus three. Like I said, fuel flow for engines 1 and 2 is 35 kilograms per minute. And we have a little bit of a fuel imbalance here. Not too bad. But let us try to fix that. So if I go into the fuel panel and we can do crossfeed. So let's go ahead and crossfeed the two center tanks. And let's see if this balances out. Actually, what am I doing? 
We're not trying to cross feed the center tank. There's nothing in the center tank. There's nothing for us to cross feed. So never mind. That should all be automatic. Um. Let me try to do this. I feel like I'm doing something very risky here. You know, I've been flying the, this this bus and flight sims for so many years, and to this day I, I'm not exactly entirely sure on the correct fuel balancing procedure, but I don't think that was correct to turn those fuel tanks off. Or fuel tank pumps off. Uh, anyways, okay, let's go into hydraulics. Looks like we have the green, blue, and yellow hydraulics. Both, uh, All three are at 3,000 PSI, which is perfect. Electrical, our BAT 1 and 2 are both at 28 volts. Our DC and DC 2 TRs are also at 28 volts, 50 amps. Oh, 59 amps on the left side and 50 amps on the right side. Okay. And so, um, our AC generators from our engines. Engine 1 is producing um, 115 volts and 400 hertz. Right side is producing 115 volts and 399 hertz. And it looks like 23% uh, is being used on the left side and 20 and 18 is being used on the right side. Our IDGs are both, it's called, uh, IDG stand for integral drive generators. And those are the ones that are attached to the accessory gearbox of the turbine engines, or turbofan engines in this case. And it uh, looks like they're 96 and 95. Okay, so beauty. Uh, pressurization, our cabin altitude pressure is at 7,500 feet, VS is zero, so we're not climbing or descending, and delta P is at eight, which is pretty good, could be a little bit lower, but could be good, and uh, looks like our inlet and outlet are off, and our safety vents are slightly venting, pack one and two are on, bleeds, these are our bleed air systems. High pressure, inlet pressure here. Oh, uh, looks like those are open. 40 PSI coming to the bleed air system. 200 degrees centigrade. Coming up to this, to 80, and then reducing to 15. So there you go. And our engines look good. Fuel used, about 1,200 each side. Oil quantity is looking great. The right side has a little bit more. Why? That's because, I don't know. Uh, PSI is good for the bleeds. Temperature, oil temperature is good. Or actually, this is not the oil temperature. This is the, uh, uh, actually it is the oil temperature. 95 degrees. Vibrations for N1 and N2 are looking within spec. Okay, so that is that. And this is like an abbreviated page here.
Okay, so our descent is going to begin in 15 miles down into Albany. Let's get some weather for Albany. So unfortunately we're not going to have an ATC, which is so funny because I made this flight on <laughs> on Vatsim. Okay. So Albany weather uh, the 8th at 0351 Zulu looks like uh, tweets are at 6 for the winds, visibility 10 light drizzle few at 3400 4800 broken 7000 overcast temperature 11 dew point 9, altimeter 2959 holy smokes ok uh, remark A02 rain ended the 47 after the hour Drizzle began the 47th after the hour, which means that it appears the rain is slightly subsiding. Sea level pressure 101 or 1001.9. And um, yeah, there's a dollar sign after that, which means that the uh, um, um, the station needs maintenance. Okay. So if we go into here. Um, 2 9 or 5 9. That is probably the lowest pressure I've flown in. Okay. Temperature 1 1. What was it 2 8 0 at 6 for the, uh, the winds? And then we're doing radio of 480. Okay, let's begin our descent. So, it looks like we don't have any speed restrictions or anything. Our only limit is at 10,000, obviously, for 250. But we're going to go down to uh, Amy, which is 3,500. So that's Amy right here. So we'll just go right down to 3,500. We don't have any ATC on board. Which sounds good to me. It's just going to be a left turn to final. Ah, shit, actually. It's a whole procedure turn that we're going to do. Oh, that's fine. But why go here if we can just go to Amy? Let's just go. Let's just proceed direct Amy. Because that's what I'm saying. I mean, that doesn't that make more sense just to do a right base turn? Why do that whole complicated procedure thing, especially with no ATC or no star? Doesn't make any sense. So we're just going to do that. And uh, let's see here. So that's that. And then our ground charts. We've got a. Um, well, here's the thing. Huh. Here's the thing. 
The winds are 280. If we land on 19, we're going to have an exact crosswind. Uh, so... I mean, we should be landing... Runway 28. And looks like the problem is they don't have. Oh, they do have an RNF 28. I don't know. Let's take a look at the RNF 28. So RNF 28 starts at Trosi, which is the initial fix. 3500, Yakut 2500, and Sime is uh, Glide Path. I intercept at 2200. Okay, 281 final approach course, 780 MDA. Let's go ahead and switch to runway 28. Okay, Mr. Pressure Procedure, climb to 3500, direct Z Way, or ZJ, and on track 305 to Maria and hold. Seems pretty easy, right? So, our, yeah, let's just, uh. Since we're already headed this way, why don't we just do that? Otherwise, we're going to have an exact right crosswind. And let's see. Crosswind component calculator. Let's see. So, let's see. If runway is 19, wind direction is 280 at 6. Yeah, we just have a crosswind from the right at six knots. You know what? Let's just keep it. That's fine. We're gonna have a left crosswind from the right at six knots. Come on. We're just gonna keep everything as it was. We're not gonna change anything. If the winds were greater than six, then yeah. Let's have a look. It was at 51 past the hour, so the next update's going to be in around 40 minutes. Or 30... 37 minutes. Um, I think we're going to be fine on runway 19. And it's good crosswind practice, so... Yeah. We're just going to keep it how it is. How is our... What am I looking for? Ah, there we go. So we're 4,200 feet. Let's go ahead and expedite that a little bit. So we're just going to do half spoilers. Now, instead of being at 3,500, we're looking at, um, ME, well, it says, still says ME at 3,500, so that's fine. And to help us descend, we can... I've increased that buffer there to 300. That's fine. But I don't want to exceed more than 4,000 feet a minute, which is already quite a bit. I mean, that's like more than 2.5 degrees. It's almost 4 degrees. Increase that speed rate just a little bit to maybe quarter. A little bit more. Two niner, five niner. So fast, Airbus.
There we go. Now we're helping ourselves out on that uh, V dev. Vertical deviation. So we're slightly high on that. Uh, we're slightly. Well, the problem was that we amended our approach, and so we shortened it up, which brought our brought ourselves up higher than our descent profile. But that's okay. We have a lot of tools on this aircraft to help us mitigate that. Okay, seatbelt signs on. Dome off. Okay, so pretty soon we should be very close to our descent profile, which we are. So we will slowly begin to stow. And as we're approaching 10,000, we're going to slow down to 250 knots. Going to decrease this nice and slow. And we are about to break that 250 at 10,000. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, we'll continue down on that. Let's go turn our uh, I think we have one though for the Phoenix yet. Yeah. Okay, so here's 250. Let's go and stow that. Yeah, let's do 240. There's no need to rush into this approach. Especially because at any we're going to be at our glide, glide um, path. Oh no, I lied. I lied. Never mind, that's hockey. But anyways. And lights on. I am very excited for this landing. Got like an eight and a half thousand foot runway, so plenty of room. Um, so we're overcast at seven thousand. We're broken at four thousand eight hundred, and we have a few clouds at three thousand four hundred. So three different. Um, we've got two ceilings actually. One at seven, one at four eight, and then we we don't have a ceiling at thirty four hundred. So here's seven, and as you can see, that overcast layer is slightly coming out. Let's see if I can dim the cabin lights here in the uh, in the Phoenix. Mm, I think it was here, and if I go into like that's sim settings, cabin, cabin lights off. Should be a little bit better for the eye. In fact, I want these to be off all the time. But I might not be able to do that. Actually, I can. Cabin lights off, save default. Look at that. Alright, let's focus on the arrival now. So we're going to continue slowing down here to the green dot. Turn these two ILS modes on. So there's 4800. Layers are kind of vague. And we're going to do VS at around 1500.
So let's do flaps one. Spoilers are armed. There's that light. Well, this is actually more than the light drizzle, but it's okay. So we can actually go down to 2000 at this waypoint here. At Ebony. Or Amy. Okay, let's continue slowing down to slats retraction. Which is right there. And we'll do approach mode. We'll just send that a nice mere thousand. Okay, glide slope look star. So the glide slope is captured, but the localizer is star, so it's in progress of being captured. Or in process rather. Oops, forgot to stow these guys here. Just in time. 200 knots, so flaps too. Nine miles out. Slow to 180. A little bit of rain here, unfortunately. How many traffic? Delta 2205 on the ILS runway 19. Eight miles out. 2500. 2500 check. Let's do gear down. Cabin crew seats for landing. Slow to 160. Oh, approach speed's going to be 137. Flaps three. Flaps four. Landing checklist, landing gear is on, signs on, cabins ready, spoils are on, flaps full, four. I mean, flaps full. Twelve knot, crosswind, eleven knot, crosswind. So missed approach is going to be initially 2,000, which is set, and then 5,000. I'm not seeing the runway yet. We've got about 600 feet until we make the decision. 1, okay, runway in sight. Got the Mauser. Oh. Now went away. <laughs> this is some really bad weather. Okay. Well, we've got the runway in sight now. We've got Pappy's and the approach path lighting. Above. Auto pilots off. 500. Checked. Minimum. Continue. Runway in sight. Oof. 
cell, manual brakes, 60, thrust idle. That was a freaking terrible landing, but let me tell you, we're on the ground. Welcome to Albany. We'll take the next one to the right to vacate. We don't need this windshield wiper. Come on. Wow. something. Timer stop. Not quite, but but definitely almost down to minimums if if uh, some things were different. Landing uh not talk about that one. How about? <laughs> My uh, crosswind technique there was interesting. That's okay. Everybody has a bad day. Unfortunately, no scenery for this airport, but uh, I'll just pick a random gate here and call it a day. How about that? Parking brake set. Cut number two. Cut number one. And welcome to Albany. Flight time was one hour, six minutes. Hope you guys enjoyed this stream. And I'll see you guys on the next.